This is Fort Frederick. It was built between 1752 and 1760 and named in honor of the reigning Dutch monarch Frederick V. It stands on the site of an earlier fort called Fort St. James, built by the English during the 1640s. It was attacked and captured by the Spanish in 1650 and later used by the French in 1650 to 1695. The present structure was designed to encourage settlement, serving as a refuge in the event of invasion or slave insurrection, as well as to protect commercial shipping in Frederickstead from privateers. By its presence, Fort Frederick lent a degree of support to the sugar industry on St. Croix, which was to prove to be the island's economic mainstay for over 200 years. So this big thing is the cistern where they collect the rainwater. Here's where it came in. It's gigantic. It's probably 12, 18, 20 feet tall. I don't know. I'm terrible at this. This room tells us all about the Moko Jumbi. It's a stilt walker or dancer. The origin of the term may come from Moko, a possible reference to an African god, and Jumbi, a West Indian term for a ghost or spirit that may have been derived from the Congo language. The Moko Jumbis are thought to originate from West African tradition and brought to the Caribbean. While the god Moko is from the Conga and Nigeria, Crucian people have added their own touch to him. The idea of Moko survived by living in the hearts of African descendants during slavery and colonial life to eventually walk the streets of the West Indies in celebration of freedom. While this figure was rooted in African heritage, the Virgin Islands adapted it, notably by adding the word Jumbi. Jumbi represents all of the evil things in this life, while Moko is a traditional god. He watches over his village and due to his towering height, he is able to foresee danger and evil. The Moko arrived in St. Croix by walking across the Atlantic Ocean from the west coast of Africa, laden with many centuries of experience. And yet in spite of all human attacks and encounters, he still walks tall. This room tells all about the transfer. Yeah from the Dutch to the U.S. Here's a little of the Danish. Of the Danish. Yeah. A little diorama. Uh, up there. And you see up there, right there? Uh-huh. No, over here. It, oh. It, it does the check. Oh, my it's, goodness. There's a copy of the check with about all three items. OK, here's the check to purchase just a few homes will cost you that much. Yeah. But then the... Here's an exhibit about the Tainos, which were some of the native people who were on the land. so much. Here this tells about Salt River Bay, which is up north on the northeast part. Taino. Here's that. I hadn't heard that name before. Christopher Columbus did land here. And that's up north by Salt River Bay. He, he actually landed there. November 14th, 1493, it says. Here is a powder magazine where they would store a short door. So you gotta duck down. And here they would store gunpowder.
historic pottery and sea glass. Now this one I'm looking forward to. Whoop, you have to watch where you're going or you'll trip over the, oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, you can't see the from the reflection. Can you see it through the glass? All of that sea glass is amazing. It's hard to see through the cabinet. Oh my goodness. Oh, if only I could find some pieces like that. Bottle stoppers. <gasps> Look at this. Soft blue, aqua, cobalt, teal. I have found some of this teal in turquoise. Not very much, and it's been in small pieces. That's a pretty cool bottleneck there. Cornfowl flower blue. I took the top. Bonfire glass? What is that? That's where you throw a bottle in your fire and it melts down. Mm -hmm. Metal. Look at the purple. I'd call it light pink. But... Seafoam green, jade, Kelly green, black. Yellow, look, they don't have very much yellow. Amber, cornflower blue, brown, golden amber. We found some of those, didn't we? Citron, gray, whoa, honey, there's a lot of different color. Orange is the rarest, red is the next rarest. But yellow might be also. Look at all this, it's just piled up, a couple inches thick on the bottom. And then they've got a magazine, the reflection on the glass is no good, with some of these bottles and then some of the pieces of the bottles. And then, somebody was very creative. They made a curtain of sea glass. Kind of a rainbow, if you will, because it goes from kind of dark to light, maybe. Not maybe, it does. And then here's a little sea glass curtain with shells in it, hanging off of a stick. And the original construction. I think they got a little termite activity there. So here we are on top of the fort. And there is a mahogany furniture collection exhibit somewhere. Probably right here. Watch where you step. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. I hesitate to even walk in. Absolutely beautiful furniture. Look at the baby basket. With its own little mosquito netting. Oh, there's a couple of them. Beautiful bed. Shaving mirror. 
like an old toilet. I don't know if you can see if it's... I think this shuts, it does. That shuts. They called this a bidet, 1848. Stands. I like this one. This one opens up. It has not a bad view from your master bedroom. If that's what this is. Here in downtown, in the, I don't know, parade field. I don't know what you'd call this. Here, you want to film me ringing the bell? Park next to Fort Frederick is known as Bud Ho Park. It was here on July the 3rd, 1848, that 8,000 slaves led by General Bud Ho demanded their freedom or they would lay waste to St. Croix. Bowing to their demands, Governor General Peter Schlossen announced on that day that all unfree in the Danish West Indies are now free. So here's a good exhibit for any real estate agent. It's trim molding. This is the kind of architectural style. I don't know if it's Danish. I'm pretty sure it's probably Danish. Selected Frederickstead architectural elements, 1898 to 1981. So different. I wonder what this room was originally. That's a pretty cool curved walls, brick. A model of Violet Steinman House, located at 70A Custom Street. That's here in Frederickstead. There's a place kind of like that for sale right now that's painted, um, not purple, but um, look at the cool porch. But it's really run down and the roof is gone and they want way too much money, which I can't remember what that was. Here's a copper downspout. They would leave those, put those downspouts to cisterns because most of the water here is cistern water that people collect. Every house has a cistern or two. And the gentleman we're staying with, he has four, his home and three rentals on the property and he has four cisterns. We'll go look at that one in a minute. Lots of detail. I wish we still put this much detail into our construction. I know it costs a lot of money to do. Oh, these are cool. Molding. Brackets, hand painted house numbers, 
fan construction used as an upper room divider. And that probably arched all the way over. I want to make a mold of all of these. Oh, a cute little Victorian. Okay, the scale jars and flasks on the shelves of the miniature drugstore were actually used in the Christiansted apothecary. The scale and weights are marked with the crest of King Christian. So here's a little diorama of a house. And then the pharmacy. <gasps> Look at that little, can you see that jar through the reflection? There. Those are cool. Here is a fabric store. And the bedroom of the house that's upstairs above the commercial. And more fantastic molding. Look at the top of the columns. I sure wish we did construction like that. These feel like plaster. John, are those plaster? Not wood? Oh, it says plaster column. Duh, if I would have read. So this is a solitary confinement cell or a punishment cell where slaves who committed either minor or major offenses could be put in here. It's like their prison. It's a real short door. The whole thing is real short. It kind of reminds me of the slave huts in Bonaire. It's actually a little bigger than the slave huts in Bonaire, but that's it. That's the only air they got was right out of that. Can you imagine on a hot day? I don't know. I guess it might be cool with the thick walls, but then they shut the door on you and ugh. I learned today that they measure cannons by the weight of the balls that go in them. Ten pound balls, six pound balls. Seventeen sixty three. I think that's the crest of King Christian. Yeah, eight pound, twelve pound, and something pound cannons were loaded within recessed walls, later filled in to defend against a naval assault. Thank you for joining us on this tour of Fort Frederick in Frederickstead, St. Croix, the U.S. Virgin Islands. Forgive my poor video skills. I promise they will get better. Please click on the thumbs up to like this video and click on the logo to subscribe.